fellow indie game fans, March had some amazing indie games and some games you might not have heard of, although a couple did kind of fall flat with mixed reviews, but some gems to check out begins with Sentry, a defense-focused first-person shooter in which you are defending the core of your spaceship against alien invaders. If you played action tower defense titles like Ox Must Die or Sanctum, it will feel familiar since you are essentially building out towers and traps to help fight off the aliens and can even do things like weld doors shut in order to slow down their advance. On a more meta level, this has a structure a bit similar to FTL Faster Than Light since there is a galactic map and you can choose which node to explore for resources while hostiles chase you from behind with awesome minute-to-minute -minute action and plenty to unlock. Strangely, however, this launch in early access with single player only with a co-op update to come, but pre-launch, I did think that co-op was the main point of the game. So maybe let the developers tinker away for a little while and then grab a couple of friends and come back to this when that update releases. I am very pleasantly surprised to see the success of The Brew Barons since it's a well-made title that deserves more attention and has managed to do decently well for themselves so far. This is an action simulation title that mixes aerial combat with running your own brewery in which pirates are attempting to stop you from disrupting their monopoly which leads to conflict. This game has an amazing look with a theme and setting inspired by the Studio Ghibli classic Poco Rosso from 1992 and surprisingly has quite the amount of depth and sight stuff such as a fishing system and even an in-universe dice rolling game, so it's well put together and worth your time. We finally had the long-awaited release of the pixel art action platformer Berserk Boy, a high-speed title that sees you pretty much bouncing from one enemy to the next using your various elemental powers to effectively take them out. The elemental forms are also used in traversal and exploration in the level with secrets to find, but it's not a full metroidvania so don't go expecting that going in. You can see shades of Sonic and Freedom Planet in addition to Mega Man in this and will be for fans of the genre. Factorio meets Terraria can sum up the gist of Auto Forge since this is an automation title but not from the classic top-down view but rather as a side-scrolling platformer, which does add additional considerations to the gameplay since elevation becomes a much more important factor. It nails the gameplay loop of the automation game since you start off having to do things manually yourself but eventually unlock tools and machines for automatic mining and processing of raw materials, with the side-scrolling combat here really resembling Terraria. It's an early access title and seems to have quite some ways to go, but the developer is rather active post-launch and is taking community feedback to help shape the game by picking it up at this point in time. Let's do this. Honestly speaking, I'm not even that big of a stealth game fan, but they are rare enough that every release is of interest, which makes raw metal quite the curiosity. Yeah, I know. Never seen this much hired muscle in a mining up before. What are they so worried about? There may be hope after all. Alright then, I won't hold back. Show me what you got, kid! This mixes top-down stealth action with a third-person brawler in which you are doing your best not to get caught in the former, but when hits the fan, it's time to throw down. The combat can be brutal and interestingly, your character is unarmed as compared to the enemies, but there is a notable difficulty spike in the bosses. This suit is power. You can't take it from me. Still, it looks awesome and is fairly well made and is the definition of a hidden gem. You don't stand a chance. 
You're beginning to see more symbol building rook lights, undoubtedly due to the success of games like Luck be a Landlord, and to a lesser extent, Bellatro, since these are all gambling themed titles with slot machine, poker, and now roulette and bingo bango. However, rather than betting and trying to earn money at gambling, you are instead manipulating the slots, using relics and power-ups to your advantage in order to maximize your score, combining the inherent addictiveness of casino games with the more innocent roguelike satisfaction into quite the package. I'm guessing we'll see attempts at roguelike blackjack and roguelike craps in the near future, since that seems to be the meta right now, so it's a race to see who can make the best one of these. Strangely enough, the highly anticipated Pepper Grinder has ended up on the Hidden Gems list, which is not typical for a Devolver Digital published title. So it seems like this coverability of indie games is going through somewhat of a phase right now. More on that in another upcoming video, so subscribe to the channel if you have not. However, this title is a fun little romp since the gimmick is that you hold a drill and can use it to easily move through soil like a dolphin through water and just feels great in motion. It's linear but does have secrets and is otherwise a fairly short title but is well made and fun through and through. I've mentioned Godsworn a number of times in the lead up to its early access release since this is a mythological real-time strategy game, a genre like the stealth game isn't all that common these days although there is a little bit of a resurgence in terms of upcoming games. This is a classic RTS complete with base building, resource gathering and producing massive armies to clash against each other of pagan gods and their followers versus the crusaders and the armies of heaven, where of course mythological creatures will play a pivotal role in turning the tide of battle. It's a decent chunk of content for early access with 5 story campaign missions 11 skirmish maps with CPU or PvP, 1 to 3 player PvE co op challenge maps, and 3 factions, but this is only supposed to be about half of what would be in the final game, but it's a great first step and I cannot wait to see more. <laughs> They did it! Necrosmith 2 is a sequel to a game from 2021 and is bigger and better in so many ways. The roguelite Necromancer Simulator is back and has the same compelling gameplay loop of raising undead minions to slay your enemies and then to use their body parts to construct new, more powerful minions using unique body parts like wings to give your units flight so that they can access new areas. The sequel introduces titans which are giant monsters and of course, you can create your own giant unit for an epic clash, with the variety of upgrades and unlocks for your necromancer tower leading to one of the most compelling gameplay loops. This had mixed reviews at launch due to the unit's AI being quite dumb since there were reports of units simply standing there and not reacting to the enemy, which has since been fixed as far as I can tell, so if the initial launch reception turned you off the game, do give it another chance. I always look for uniqueness in indie games since great execution can take you pretty far but the idea for a game itself has to be remarkable which is precisely why Felvedeck is of interest. On paper, this is another RPG maker game but look at how different this looks as compared to the mental image that comes into your mind when you think of an RPG maker game. It also has the setting of 15th century Slovakia which Full disclosure, I'm completely unfamiliar with, but yet there's something to this game. For one, it does have turn-based combat, but from a first-person perspective, so you can see the character chugging potions and swinging his sword, and cuts out the filler of the JRPG grind. 
There have been some comparisons between this and fear and hunger, although I want to clarify that they are quite different, but I suppose it falls in the same bucket of games that are at its core JRPGs, but changes up the combat and systems, since there isn't even leveling in this game for example. It is short and sweet, and does remind me of High Lakes with some of the enemy designs, and for something so in the games, this is the title to get. Watch this video for more upcoming RPGs.